So now we will have the keynote presentation on why my heart is in digital. Our keynote speaker is Manuel Manny V. Pangilinan, Chairman and CEO of PLDT and Smart Communications Incorporated. Manuel V. Pangilinan, or MVP as he is widely known, is the chairman of Philippine Long Distance Telephone Company, PLDT, the country's dominant telecom company, and Smart Communications Incorporated, the largest mobile phone operator in the Philippines. MVP was a member of the Board of Overseers of the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania in the United States. He was chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Ateneo de Manila University. He is currently the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the San Beda College. He also serves as chairman of Hong Kong Bayanian Trust, a non-stock, non-profit foundation which provides vocational, social, and cultural activities for Hong Kong's foreign domestic helpers. MVP also is chairman of Philippine Business for Social Progress, or the PBSP, a social action organization made up of the country's largest corporations. He is also vice chairman of the Foundation for Crime Prevention, a private sector group organized to assist the government with crime prevention. He is a member of the Board of Trustees of Caritas Manila and Radio Veritas Global Broadcasting Systems Incorporated. He was also a former commissioner of the Pasig River Rehabilitation Commission and a former governor of the Philippine Stock Exchange. The list goes on. In June 2012, he was appointed as co-chairman of the newly organized U.S. Philippines Business Society, a nonprofit society which seeks to broaden the relationship between the United States and the Philippines in the areas of trade, investment, education, foreign and security policies, and culture. MVP has been awarded the 10 Outstanding Young Men of the Philippines for International Finance in 1983, President Pamana ng Pilipino Award by the Office of the President of the Philippines in 1996, Best CEO in the Philippines by Institutional Investor in 2004. C Best CEO in the Philippines, well, yes, CEO of the Year Philippines by Biz News Asia in 2004 as well. People of the Year by People Asia Magazine in 2004. Distinguished World Class Businessman Award by the Association of Makati Industries in 2005. Sir, bear with us. I think everyone has to hear it. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it a million times before and Management Man of the Year by the Management Association of the Philippines in 2005. In May 2006, the Office of the President of the Republic of the Philippines awarded him the Order of Lakandula, rank of a commandant in recognition of his contributions to the country. December 2008, Biz News Asia Man Magazine awarded to him the Business Icon Gold Award for having greatly contributed to the Philippine economy through achievements in business and society. In 2010 November, he was chosen by the Asia CEO Awards as the Global Filipino Executive of the Year for 2010. In June 2012, Finance Asia awarded him as the Philippines Best CEO for 2012. MVP graduated cum laude from the Ateneo de Manila University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics. He received his MBA degree from the Wharton School of Finance and Commerce at the University of Pennsylvania, where he was a Procter and Gamble, uh, and Gamble Fellow. He was conferred four honorary doctorates in humanities, San Beda College in 2002, Xavier University in 2007, Holy Angel University in Angeles, Pampanga in 2009, and Far Eastern University in April 2010. Well, that's all for now. But you're going to hear a lot more from him. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm, warm round of applause for Mr. MVP. Well, maraming salamat, uh, Lexi. Good, good morning to uh, all of you. Um, I see some familiar faces from the who were who were at the Ad Congress in Naga City last year. And uh, as I said then, and I still say now, TV5 is still the third largest TV network in the country. <laughs> and so, after some arm twisting from Earl Valencia here, dito na mi. Uh, IMAP President Manny Fernando, officers and delegates of IMAP to this sixth uh, summit, my colleagues from PLDT, Smart TV5, Miralco, Idea Space, and uh, as Manny said, Felix Mining. Is that correct? Uh, good morning again. Thank you for this opportunity to speak at your summit. I have thought twice before accepting your invitation because I must admit, 
I'm neither a digital native nor a certified techie. In fact, my first encounter with technology was with the Telex machine and the IBM electric typewriter. But on reflection, I'm more digital than I had imagined. I guess as part of PLDT, my day-to-day -day life is enveloped by digital technologies. Let me tell you a story. Last August the 6th, at the height of Habaga, Nash Rasella, the assistant coach of the under-18 national basketball team, and assistant coach of Talking Techs, posted on Twitter pictures of the SGS gym in Araneta Avenue underwater. That started a conversation online in which Nash described the team stranded at the gym. So the following day, Nash tweeted again that the team was still marooned and had run out of food and water. So about 8 a.m. of the following day of that particular day, 8th, uh, 7th of August, Coach Chotres texted Nash asking how they were, and Nash answered with his text, trapped parin. Chot replied, okay, coordinating with MVP, stand by. At about the same time, Sunny Barrios, Executive Director of the Samahan Basketball in Pilipinas, texted me asking if we'd get food and water to the team. Sunny sent the same SMS to Al Panilio of Meralco, who dispatched a Meralco crew, but reported, however, that like pastao na ang tubig. At that point, we got in touch with TV5 President Ray Espinosa and Luci Cruz Valdez of uh, TV News to send a rescue team with rubber boats. At 11.28 a.m., Coach Chot tweets, tell the boys help us, help is on the way, and indeed, at 11.44 a.m., Olsen Rosella, head coach of the team, texted Coach Chot back, their hill ready coach. Paolo Bidiones of Rescue 5 then posts a tweet, Coach, heavy one accounted for, all safe and sound, but a little wet, glad to be of service. Galing, no? Nagumpisa sa Twitter, nagpalitan ng text at nagtawagan sa smart at token text. Sumali, Meralco. <laughs> TV5, PLDT. <laughs> so, indeed, the digital universe is something to behold. 1.8 trillion gigabytes in 500 quadrillion files exchanged two years ago, more than doubling every two years, according to Teradata magazine in its June 2012 edition. That's the video equivalent of you watching your HDTV for 22 million years. John Gatz of the International Data Corporation described these bits of information in the digital universe as numerous as all the stars in our physical universe. That is the power of digital at work today. The exceptional is becoming normal, in fact, the new normal, and it's become much a part of my life as it has yours. Even my humor has gone digital. You've heard about pickup lines, right? <laughs> well, you might have heard this one. Google ka ba? Kasi nasa iyo lahat ang hinahanap ko. I think that was published, I think, actually, I think the Star Inquirer, actually. Pero meron din ako. Twitter ka ba? Arty mo eh. Isa na lang. Instagram ba kayo? kuhang kuhan nyo eh. So if you folks are going to uh, tweet about that, please don't forget to put the IMAP hashtag. Our strategic response to this digital tsunami is to embrace rather than resist it. We all know the worlds of telecoms, internet, and media are converging, and we want to be at the heart of that convergence, because that is precisely the space where new and opportun exciting opportunities lie. This represents the first point of our convergence and underlies our investments in media, in TV5, Signal TV, in Philippine Daily Inquirer, Philippine Star, and Business World. The challenges to PLDT emerge from two fronts, actually. 
First, the need for continuous upgrade of our networks to supply unlimited bandwidth to our customers. And second, the threat from over-the-top players like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. As a telco, our first priority is, is to ensure to all of you that our delivery infrastructure is updated digitally, is IP enabled, and capable of delivering boundless broadband. We know that the mobile space is the future, that LTE or L4G is the future, as are data centers, cloud computing, and business analytics. Smart, for example, has just overhauled its entire mobile network to make it easily upgradable to LTE and HSPA. Tomorrow, in fact, the 25th of August, SMART will fire up its 4G network for commercial service about a month ahead of globe, <laughs> capable of delivering data wirelessly at 42 megabytes per second. Access to high-speed mobile internet will therefore become more widely available all over the country. As well, PLDT is turbocharging its 54,000-kilometer domestic fiber network and raising the capacity of its international undersea cable systems up to 100 gigabytes per second. I believe our total capacity internationally is up to 2 terabytes already. We're also expanding our cloud infrastructure to lead the hundreds of billions who have become addicted to cloud-based social media and email services. Nonetheless, we must cast a careful eye on the layer above us, the OTT players. For us to ignore them is perilous, but to surrender to their space is unsafe. We must therefore find a balance where we can partner with OTT suppliers and evolve our business model in an independent yet cooperative way. This is the second point of our convergence, merging telcos as a delivery system with OTT players as content suppliers. Again, this justifies our investment in media as providers of content. We can gain from such a cooperative business model. OTT players actually generate more demand for network bandwidth and capacity, and PLDT stands to benefit from greater requirement for broadband services. And if we actually provide OTT services to our customers, we realize additional revenues as well. Moreover, if we enable our customers to see those services in relation to each other, this will raise our relevance to them and they will pay for those services. I think Maria was here yesterday and we're trying to make an investment in Rappler and one of the first questions I asked her is that are you making money or how do you make money in Rappler? And that's I think a challenge for her. We must be mindful, therefore, that proprietary content and information are valuable, so they must be paid for. We welcome smartphones and tablets as they make our customers more engaged with our products and services. For example, Apple has succeeded because their devices put context in the hands of the consumer, especially with the application universe, which makes Apple devices more interesting, supplying users with a limited access to entertainment, business solutions, and information with a single touch and, a, and from a single device. Would you believe there is even an app called Toilet Tracker? Talk about emergency cases. I think this app is sponsored by Imodium. <laughs> Finally, customers can benefit if we add media services as part of our bouquet of product offerings. If PLDT can supply streaming services universally, local playlists, local music, local video, that would be great. This is an OTT service which, is, which can change the business model of TV5 itself. So now let me turn to you, IMAP. Clearly, the trinity of new technology, mobile broadband, social networks, and online access is crucial to IMAP. We all know, I think you must have dis discussed this yesterday, that social networks have become attractive to brands as distribution platforms enhancing the reach and effectiveness of your ad campaigns. But user analytics is now emerging as the game changer for, for digital marketing. In this regard, our group of companies is in the best position to catalyze the development of user analytics in a way different from how other countries are doing it. 
Meralco will start building by the fourth quarter of this year a smart grid on top of its power distribution layer that will deliver prepaid metering service, demand response, and outage management. The advantage to the consumer is that he will be empowered to manage el his electricity consumption better. But the benefit to Meralco is a better understanding of the consumer, his preferences, demand profile, and actual be behavior, thus providing Meralco with a better tool to serve him. My needed water is being encouraged to move in the same direction as our tollways, hospitals, and of course, PLDT itself. At the end of the day, each of our companies would be enabled by user analytics to tailor fit its products, services, and messaging to the specific and individual customer because it now knows him much better. I'd like to conclude now by saying that, that whilst all of these are new and interesting, we must remind ourselves that many Filipinos are still cut off from the digital world. They live at the outskirts of thriving web-connected web communities here and abroad, looking from the outside in, separated by a deep digital abyss. It is important for all of us, for the future of this country, that we bridge that divide as quickly as we can. As a 2009 World Bank study points out, Broadband internet is not just an infrastructure. It is a general purpose technology that should fundamentally restructure an economy and even help the poor. So far, broadband has helped the Philippines rise to the top globally in industries like business process outsourcing and call centers. But it has done painfully little to raise the productivity, for example, of our farmers. Unlike India, we're unable to supply our farmers with real time online weather and crop raising information. We have so few farming applications here, despite the banks of knowledge deposited with Philippine-based organizations like the International Rice Research Institute in Laguna. This brings me to Ideaspace, our nonprofit incubator accelerated fund designed to stimulate innovation amongst our youth and promote technology-based entrepreneurship in this country. So what brought us to conceive of idea space? We at PLDT are confident we can upgrade and build the bandwidth you all require. Been there, done that. But the content and services provided over our infrastructure layer are almost all provided now by non-Filipino OTTs. It's sad to ask this question, why can't the next in Instagram or Google be Filipino? So this innovation void defines precisely the rationale behind the launch of Idea Space. In fact, we're launching a national competition very soon, perhaps by next month, to find and select the 10 best technology-based ideas to be incubated in our program. With a funding commitment from our group companies aggregating 500 million pesos, over the next five years, we'd like to give these startups the sunlight opportunity of succeeding. I don't want to end on such a serious note, so let me provide a more powerful argument why we should shift to digital. Simply put, digital adds more fun in the Philippines. Just monitor what's trending at makikita natin mga artista, at mga media na nagsasalpukan sa, sa YouTube. Masaya, di ba? Tuloy, this has led me to think that for my heart to be truly in digital, it's time to act like a digital native. So let me finish by saying, hey, I just met you, <laughs> and this is crazy. But here's my Twitter. Follow me, baby. Thank you very much, sir. Pwede stand-up comedian si MVP, ano? I think that we at least got five laughs out of today. I think that's another round of applause. Medyo comedian si sir. Sir, may we invite you to please sit with us here for a few minutes?
And yes, he just recently put up a Twitter account. Yes, sir, is that correct? Last night lang! Here, sir. Thank you. How many tweets have you put out there already, sir? Not at all. Wala pa, wala pa. I'm sure may manager na may manager na magtitweet para sa kanya. Hindi kasi, pag nag-tweet ako, di, di na ako makakatrabaho. I'll just be tweeting the whole day, right? It is addictive, isn't it? Okay, so sir, maybe we can, would you like to start? Um, what we can do is please approach any of the microphones that are closest to you, state your name and company, and give us a question or comment for MVP. This is your one chance in a very long time, so I suggest you use it. Is there anyone who'd like to start? And Theater 3, I, I know you're there as well, so if you have any questions, we will give you time later, this, later before MVP says goodbye. So would anyone like to start? Yes. Hey, how are you? My name is Kartik Ram. I'm visiting from Singapore. I uh, run Asia Pacific for a company called Adphonic, which is a mobile ad network. So working closely with telcos in Singapore and previously in the UAE and then in the US before that, I noticed that they all sort of right around now are turning into media companies, diversified media companies that have been making acquisitions that are sort of uncharacteristic of them a few years ago, uh, like Singtel acquiring a movie and so on. So as smart and sort of as a player in this country, how do you see your company and your cluster of companies becoming more sort of social friendly, more media friendly? Is it by acquisition? Is it by incubating? Uh, is it by partnering? Is it by all of the above? Or is it by getting into whole new spaces? Well, it, it's all of the above, no? Uh, the, you know, as I said in my remarks earlier, the, our, our principal job as a telco is is in the infrastructure layer no we uh, it's our it's uh, you know it's it's our obligation in fact to to uh, build the appropriate uh, delivery system as and when technology dictates it or as and when and as, as and when the the, the customer uh, requires it uh, that that's our first job we we uh, we uh, have to ensure that uh, if boundless broadband is required in this country, as it is becoming back, becoming to be required, then so be it. And uh, you know, PLET has a has a significant uh, capex budget that it has announced about two years ago. We're spending more than sixty billion in order to upgrade our network, precisely to move in that direction. Now, the question: the, the, there are guys on top of us, the OTT players, who are using our networks. And the question for us is that at some point, will a Google, a Facebook, or even any of the uh, Asia Pacific uh, OTTs move into our space or indeed enlarge their own space uh, to go beyond the traditional, if you may, uh, definition of OTTs? And uh, I wouldn't be surprised because the capability of a Facebook to acquire someone like Verizon or uh, who's the other seller? In t -Mobile? T-Mobile maybe because uh, ATT failed to acquire that is is not far fetched. No, so the potential merger combination between OTT and the telco elsewhere in the world is likely to happen. So we might as well move into their space because we could get obsolete, obsolete, so to speak, by a combination like that. So we uh, that's why we invested in media because. I keep telling someone that, uh, you know, if I tweet that I woke up at, like today, I woke up at, say, 6.29, brush my teeth, peed away at 6.30, had breakfast at 6.40, I mean, you know, who'd be really interested? But if it are someone like, say, Ann Curtis, that's different, no? So either you're a famous personality or uh, the information you provide is proprietary, then people will go to, to your to your tweets and and pay for it. That's that's the whole idea, isn't it? So we, we do have to move into that space. That that's our belief. So for now we're getting into uh, initially at least legacy type media, T V five, GMA seven, maybe. Why are you looking at me, sir? <laughs> You're from the other station, right? <laughs> I heard. So you know, I, I think it's gonna happen. How quite how it will happen uh, is, is, is still an open book. And I think other telcos, we're not alone. I think someone like Telefonica is attempting to do what we're doing. And it's, 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 uh, no, it's, it's an unfinished uh, chapter. We don't know whether that 
at the end of the day, it makes sense from a commercial standpoint because I don't think anyone has succeeded in really combining uh, telco space, say, with media space or even OTT space. So we don't know. Uh, but sure like hell, we're going to try to make it successful. Thank you very much for that. Can we have the next question, please? Yes, thank you. So, sir, do you follow Ann Curtis on Twitter? No. <laughs> Part of the one million? <laughs> no, I'm more uh, news. News delegation. News delegation. Okay. Yes, please. Hi, good morning, uh, Mr. Panilinan. Um, Sorry, may you state your name, please, and um, the company you're associated with? I'm Ayi Ubaldo. I'm from Pana Ad Edge and the Ad Board. Um, you, your exposure has always been business, service, um, but... Um, you know, last year you rocked the Ad Congress and now you're at the IMAP. So basically you're now in a different, uh, you know, um, arena, which is advertising the way I see it. Um, how has the experience been so far? If you may, please, thank you. Well, um, really, uh, you, you deserve the respect that uh, people from our group uh, should give. Right, and I tell you, um, through the days of the Habagat, typhoons, and even I just got back from Hong Kong yesterday, I, I was working in Hong Kong on this speech. You don't know how many drafts. And last night, in our final drafting session, after I finished playing badminton at 11 until about 3.30 a.m., we were working on the final draft of that speech. So every word is a labor of love that I spoke today. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you guys have formed this association because that's the future of this country. Um, one thing that uh, we failed actually to, to crack in that speech where we don't have a clear insight is how, is to, is how digital, the digital world is going to help the poor of this country. That's something we, I think that's something you should look at uh, in your next conference. And maybe you should, uh, Manny Fernando was saying you need a better venue because you're growing. Maybe you should move this to the Maralco Theater, which can accommodate <laughs> 1,000 people. <laughs> and you don't have to invite me next year. Thank you very much for that. May we have another question, please? Or perhaps we have, because obviously, sir, we also have from Twitter. We have a lot of questions coming in from Twitter as well. Is there any question ready from Twitter? Or perhaps from Theater 3? Seems shy on Theater 3. Oh, ah, shy ba ang Theater 3? Wala pa, wala pa. Okay. Well, I have some questions, sir. So, I mean, the internet at this point, obviously, it's not necessarily unlimited. Are we going to see the day when it's just out there all the time, nonstop? Yes, I think so. I think so. But, but really, the question for us is how do we... Because... The, the, it's, it's, a, it's a very painful and, and, and uh, maybe a conundrum that is not realized by, by people in this country and maybe people in other parts of the world. I think in the presentation that we've had recently to the PLET board by a technical consultant that laid out the digital uh, landscape in the next few years, one of the main issues confronting the digital world is that, is that the pricing for the digi digital service is rather low. So, but you know, from from our perspective, how can we invest? I mean, this this these things I mentioned to you, gigabytes, whatever, terabytes, cost money. We just launched our third cable landing station in Diet Camarines Sur, and that costs four hundred million dollars. So uh, somebody's got to pay for it, because if it's not paid for, uh, investors like us will not invest. So then you go back. You you you, you are where you are no progress will be made. So people have got to be, if you may, um, persuaded that there's got to be some reasonable form of payment for the service. Otherwise, we will never, you know, we'll never make progress. No? These things don't come for free. The, the good news is that over time, as the user base expands digitally, then the cost of equipment, the cost of CapEx per, per user will go down. So it's important as well that the um, the number of users expand, um, and whilst this country may have a hundred million people, 
and not for the RHB, nor I guess it, I don't know. Uh, it helps that you have a large user base to achieve the economies of scale. Because at the end of the day, if you translate this country into purchasing power, we are a small economy. No, in fact, smaller than the economy of Hong Kong, of about seven million people. No? So, you know, uh, just don't get me started on this anti-competition, antitrust. Uh, bill that's pending before Congress, but you know it, it, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, please. Good morning. I'm John Neri. I'm from the Philippine Daily Inquirer. I'm glad you brought uh, <clears throat> the issue back to the question of paid content. Um, I was intrigued when you said <clears throat> that you talked to Maria Ressa and uh, you asked her how they will make money from Raptor.com, and that. Um, proprietary content must be paid for. I was wondering if uh, you can uh, allow us a peek into your thinking on uh, alternative business models for uh, digital journalism. Um, how can the likes of Maria Ressa make money in your, um, in your view? Well, we've, you know, I've had sessions with her because uh, we're, we're uh, Marie is a wonderful person. I think Rappler has has has, has progressed wonderfully, you know, uh, under her and her team. And um, I haven't seen the numbers, um, but you know, it, it's one of the questions, important questions. I feel it to her. I, I frankly, personally, I don't expect her to make much money. That's not really my point. But you do have to make money in order to pay for the light bulbs and the, and the salaries and so forth. So she has got to be mindful of that. I think the most obvious thing is advertising online. Uh, that's a tough one. I think even the bigger, the biggest OTT players like Facebook, Twitter do make, I think, a bit of money, but not as much money as, for example, as the legacy telcos in the States or here. You know? So it is, it is, it is uh, an open question as to how OTT players could actually make money to translate what the consumer wants uh, digitally into something that makes it a, a profitable enterprise. Um, so the answer is, I, d I really don't know. I think the more obvious one would be the promos and the ads that come online. Will that supplant eventually the, uh, the television screen? I think in due course it is likely to, uh, but that model has not uh, emerged in as clear a form as we could see it. Uh, all we know is that we have to place our bet on that future. No? Otherwise, if it takes off, then you know we're we're in the backwash of uh, of technology, and that's that will be the end of PLT. Right? Um, good morning, sir. Emma Gabriel from Yan TV Vietnam. Um, I'd like to ask, how can you help? I mean, how can the digital world? Are your digitized platform help in developing commodity industries like sugar and rice? I guess what I'm trying to point is, how can you help in the country's development with your digitized platform? Well, insta the availability of instant real-time information, like prices of uh, rice, uh, commodity prices. We, you know, we're a exporter of gold, copper, nickel, etc. So, I guess online real-time. Uh, information for for those prices, no? Um, but I think you have to break it down per industry. It's it's um, you know, uh, for example, the mining industry where we're in is doesn't quite operate in a way where we, for example, uh, would buy certain things, certain supplies that are available online. We 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 export our concentrates on the basis of bilateral contracts long term with the smelters in Japan or Korea. So it's it's not capable of being traded as such. No? Uh, and there are business reasons for that. So the, the ability to to trade our our copper and gold is very limited. No? So you have to look at the I guess industry what the requirements are in terms of, of trading online and you know frankly at the end of the day uh, 
the country's production of minerals is so small that it really doesn't count anyway in the world. No? If we were to shut down all of our mines in this country, I think the world would just stifle a yawn. Say, oh, Philippine mine is closed. So be it. Thank Sorry. You. Hello. Yes, I'm Charlotte from Citibank. Um, I just want to ask a question. Um, sir, you've actually had the privilege of um, interacting with industry leaders. I just have two questions. Um, first is, um, what's your general feel of the acceptance of um, the corporate leaders now? Because yesterday, uh, most of the questions pertain to the challenges faced, I guess, with the agencies in convincing their clients to actually delve into going digital on top of their traditional advertising strategies. Um, so I just want to ask, um, among your in, uh, during your interactions, how, what's your impression of the general acceptance already of the digital uh, medium for large and even medium companies? And second, it's a more personal question, how do you personally advocate it among your peers? It, that's a tough one. Um, as to the first question, I, I guess it depends on, uh, you know, uh, if you were to look at, uh, maybe there, it's a question of seniority, let's put it that way, amongst our business leaders. No? Amongst the more senior ones, I, I don't think they are, they're probably pretty much like me, not neither digital natives nor certified techies. I think there's some, I think, understanding by some of them, I would guess about the importance of digital and the internet and so forth. But I, I, would, I would surmise here that, that there's not much appreciation at the senior level of how, how the internet is impacting the business. No? Uh, maybe, but when you go down to the younger crop of uh, senior middle to middle management, there is a better appreciation of the internet in, as to its impact on on the business. I think, frankly, that's a reality. There may be exceptions. I mean, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, those exposed, more exposed to technology would be better appreciative of the impact of the internet on that. Uh, your second question is personally, how do I feel? Or? Um, I, I probably get more influenced by the people over at uh, PLT Smart and son as to the importance of the internet that myself being the leader in that regard no um so you you, you have to you know i i have to understand what it is that they're saying and uh, be able to translate that into into the business goals of that particular business no? um you know it, it's some of the benefits to the business are obvious in certain companies the first one being PLDT because it's just technology driven, uh, but the Meralco is something that is not quite apparent, but now they're moving heavily into the digital space with the smart grids, smart metering, outage management, demand management, and the like. And that should translate itself as well into their buy center, their, their payment systems. I think my Nila Water will do the same thing, prepaid metering. They'll build also a smart grid on top of their water distribution layer. Uh, I think the, tel the tollways will move in that direction. We want to see your cell phones as a payment device for the for for tollways. Uh, we want to see a single payment system across tollways, light rail, heavy rail. Should we build those things eventually? Airports and even even retail. No? So uh, hospitals are a fert fertile ground for IT applications. No? And uh, the leader there is Makati Med. And, and so forth. So we want them to, the other hospitals to adopt what Makati Med is doing. So yes, uh, I may not be a techie, but uh, I'm encouraging people to actually use technology. Because at the end of the day, it saves costs. And um, we, we just want our, the people within our companies, and indeed the Filipino, to think innovatively, right? To think new things rather than uh, old things. One of our, one of my complaints about us as a people is that we're just apathetic. We take things as they are. 
right? And we, we should say that, you know, that's not right. We will do things better. We have the intellectual capital to make lives better for our people and for ourselves. Right? Yeah. Um, Lika Cuevas from Interaction TV5. Uh, sir, you mentioned earlier something about um, uh, getting into the proprietary proprietary space and uh, propa pro Con sorry <laughs> proprietary okay let's start I again guess. start again sorry. yeah i guess you can't be a news anchor right <laughs> no that's why i'm online <laughs> so it's okay we all do our best <laughs> try you, again you mentioned something about that and then very good save next uh, the change Changing the business model of TV5. Are you going to try to shrink the TVs in, uh, and put all the content into the mobile device? Because um, right now, most of the people access information, news, in their smartphones. Especially this was uh, evident during the Habagat uh, floods. Everybody was on Twitter and um, updating everybody uh, there is flood here, and then sending pictures there, and then they get information from from uh, news providers like us. And um, how this would how would this play uh, into the convergence that you're talking about with the traditional media like the uh, Philippine Daily Inquirer, Star, Business World, and probably GMA. Well, um, the answer is no. I mean, on, on two counts. So one is, uh, well, maybe yes or no. Uh, first is that I think legacy media still has some legs to go, given particularly, I'm talking about the Philippine uh, situation, given where we are and the state of the economy and the state of uh, whatever it is, of the economic standing of the Filipino, right? Uh, you know, people still watch television, right, the, on SD. Uh, and... Um, it will stay for some time, but I think eventually it will move as well to digital. I think by 2018 or something, uh, you know, terrestrial um, digital will be uh, will be enforced in this country. So everybody's got to move to HD. Uh, so the way the second point is that we we envisage a scenario in the future where it is multi-screen. Uh, you know whatever it is, laptops, uh, smartphones, tablets, etc. I think the trick, the trick, and I think it's emerging as well, that technology is emerging, is to, once you have an HDTV, we should be able to uh, not use the traditional broadcasting frequencies, but the wireless frequencies to push programs on your HDTV, right? In which case, then you, it makes your TV screen interactive as well, using your smartphones, for example. So that will be great. And we want your co the content that we broadcast on your TV to follow you wherever you are. So you're not, at the moment, you have to go where your TV screen is. That, that's, I think, you are safe to some degree, to a large degree. So we don't want, to, don't want to, I don't think that will happen in the future. Content will follow you, and instead of your scheduled programming, like 7 o'clock news, mm -hmm. whatever it is, teledramas at this time, you, are, you will be able to mix and match at the time you want to watch it. Anywhere in the world, that's the idea. So if you miss a basketball game because you're traveling, say, to Japan, when you arrive, you should be able to watch it in your hotel in Tokyo. Uh, just a uh, just, sorry, just a follow-up question. Are we going to um, apply what Meralco and, Pil uh, Meralco and Manila is doing, um, like Taylor made um, content for for if we have uh, analyzed the users or the our viewers for well, to I, follow yeah in many respects um, I sort of uh, we that's those are deep waters that we did want to uh, touch in the in the remarks because it could be terribly Orwellian in nature because <laughs> if the data that are gathered by Meralco, which has got more than 5 million customers, if you translate that into individuals, that's about 30 million people. The data in the data bank of Smart and Sun, which has got more than 70 million customers, 
Manila has got 1.2 million customers. That's about 7 million people. If somehow you're able to, to store the data, analyze them, and be able to really create an individual profile of each of you, then we would know where you are in any particular moment, uh, what your preference for food is, so that let's say you are in Rockwell and you like uh, Indian food. I don't know if there's an Indian restaurant here. <laughs> we can push and say, hey, it's lunchtime, and the Indian, the better Indian restaurants in Rockwell are one, two, three, four, five. So there's, it can provide contextual messaging to, to each individual tailor fitted. I think it's awesome from a marketing perspective, but it is fearsome because we know where you are. We know, you know where you live. <laughs> where you live, what you want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? So I don't know, but I think it will happen. I, I think it will it will happen, you know. And I think the group's data bank it can be so extensive that we should have that ability to know more about you guys. Uh, good morning, Mr. Pangilinan from Theater 3. Oh, okay. It's not a ghost. <laughs> it's from Theater 3, <laughs> sir, because Sorry. we're streaming there as well. <laughs> Sorry, I had to... Okay, uh, go ahead, um, please. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned um, using digital as a uh, medium for reaching out to the poor. Um, I've actually been meaning to start a social enterprise based on an idea that I've been um, formulating. Uh, um, the, actually, my question is, how does so a guy like me, for instance, get to present or discuss an idea that could potentially revolutionize how we give to charities using your, in, your telco infrastructure? Well, sir, maybe you should be in theater two first. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sir? Well, your question is how you use digital to help uplift the poor. Is, uh, is that basically the question? No, actually, uh, sir, there's this, there's this idea that I've been crafting on my head that, um, that wants the, the needs, the infrastructure of your network um, particularly telco, and um, the idea is basically to, uh, similar to, um, like, my, it's micro charities, basically, how extensive uh, the telcos reach out, and just imagine uh, everyone on a telco being able to share or donate uh, a certain amount using their, their um, your infrastructure, basically, and being able to seamlessly give it out to charities. Uh, the, the question basically is, um, how do I present that to you? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it, I think it's happening already. I think the, the fact that uh, the group is engaged uh, either through PBSP, the Philippine Business for Social Progress, or even through SMART, right? Uh, we are a, uh, an advocate of mac microfinancing to help the poor. And uh, a number of these microfinance institutions actually deal on a cash basis. You know, they've got thousands of customers who borrow money at a rather uh, a small amounts, right? Three, five thousand pesos, housewives, associations, that sort, sort of thing. And they can transact mostly in cash. And so we're saying to make it safer, why don't you use the micropayment system, a smart, where, you know, you just, uh, you know, you're given a card, it's a debit. It's a debit card, so from time to time, weekly, I think, is the payment, is the payment schedule of the borrowers on microfinance in a microfinance context. So you just debit your card, and that gets paid automatically. So the the we do have to deal with the legal aspects of it because, I mean, the diagnosis could be wrong because you're not physically examining the patient. No? So we have to take a look at that. But you know, the ability of technology to to address. The plight of the poor is there, so we, we have to be very, very creative about how that can be used. And of course, I, I hate to sound mercenary, but th there will be the commercial aspects of that, of that service as well that we have to address. Unless it is specifically budgeted, for example, in the case of Smart Appeal, that we will allocate, as our hospitals are allocating each year, uh, a specific budget to care for the non-paying patients. Uh, 
our hospitals. Okay, sir, if you can just you. say your name and the company you work for, because you gave him a business plan, but we don't even know who you are. <laughs> Sorry, um, Miko Mishano from Campaign Center. Thank you very much, sir. Maybe we can ask for the last three questions so MVP can also rest, because we also have three more speakers, sir, after you. Yes, please. Hi, MVP. I'm Ariane from Zalora, the online retailer. Um, I think it's great that uh, your, your mission is to, you know, Give, provide access to people in the poor areas or the provincial areas. Um, my goal, or my question really is, is how do you plan to educate them um, from the infant stages? I mean, everyone in this room knows everything about Google, Instagram, but these people, they have no idea how to use the mouse or even to turn on a computer. Well, we have outreach programs uh, with respect to uh, building computer labs in the public schools. No? I think that's headed by Mon. Sweet, by him. Smart, 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 smart schools, yeah. So, uh, so we're trying to propagate the, uh, the knowledge. But I think it will be, I mean, given the, the size of the country in terms of people, I think it will, it will, it will just state naturally if, if there is that trend uh, being created. And I think, you know, when I ask, uh, friends who are parents, uh, you could, when I ask him, for example, the case of Al Panilio, he's got three kids, and he's saying his kids don't watch TV anymore. They just watch their tablets or whatever it is, the programs that they want to see, either local or foreign, no? So I think, you know, the, the conscious, consciousness for digital will simply spread once people, uh, you know, get, get wind of it, as they are in this country, no? So it's, they say uh, texting was the same thing. Uh, you know, when did it actually start? Maybe 1995, and bumulusok mga 1998, 1999. No, no. It, took, it took a number of years before it actually took off. So, how long it will take? I I don't know. Uh, our job is to ilatag yung infrastructure so that the the system is ready once uh, the consumer picks up the uh, the habit. No? And you know you're right. It, they will have to start young, and uh, I think they're there. I think uh, they're at least slowly getting there. No? It's us old folks who still do the remote control on television. Right. Good Thank morning. you very much. Go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Ardi from ABS-CBN. Um, this is regarding the multi-screen scenario. I would just like to ask one one question and one follow-up. How far off are we? Uh, meaning the Philippines, maybe not just your group of companies, but we as the Philippines in terms of infrastructure in reaching this scenario. And then the second one is what sort of companies, what type of capabilities uh, should these companies have so that they'll be able to cope with this, um, with this kind of um, environment? Thank you. I think from an infra perspective, I think we have, I would say, a decent uh, kind of delivery system already, no? and uh, not to say that we shouldn't build more, uh, wider, more expensive, bigger pipes, I think that will be coming on stream, and that's in the plans of, of PLDT, no? uh, so we, we, it's a continuous upgrade, and I tell you, he, here we go again, I mean, we in the old days of smart in 1992 when we started we started analog then we became digital that was 2g then it came 2.5g then it became 3g 3.5g and we're now at 4g uh, so dsl is becoming bigger in terms of delivery capability uh, you know the, the the capex requirements are just never ending so in, in many respects it's 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 there we know we have to build it um for a number of reasons so I think it will be there, uh, you know, not to worry. Otherwise, we, uh, we're not doing our job. No? Um, the second part of the question deals with multi-screen, is it? I don't know. I, I, I think it's not, it's not restricted to us. Uh, I, I think any number, an ABS should, 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 should do it. It can do it, I think. You're already a multimedia company, right? You have cable TV, you are in telco, uh, and you are in uh, free-to-air, and you're, um, you have uh, UHF as well, so, uh, unlike GMA. Uh, so you have a better chance, uh, probably the best chance uh, amongst the TV stations. No? 
and um, yeah, you know, there's no there's no restriction just because say you are a food company, uh, you know, if you, why you can't do it. You just have to be more creative, and that's that's what will build the digital world in this country if everybody applies their brains to see how we can apply the technology. And we need a community of innovative people. Hindi lang naman kami eh. It's not just the telco. Uh, mm -hmm. In many respects, we, our expertise is in, in, in building the road, right? Better roads, bigger roads for you guys. But we need to, people to build vehicles, the, the content that will travel on that road. And uh, the advantage is that you don't have to build a car factory, which would cost zillions of dollars. You know? I mean, so long as you've got a brain and a laptop, you're and connect to the internet, you're you're on. I mean, how did the Zuckerbergs of the world start? Well, I guess they're dropouts, aren't they? Maybe that's a good start. <laughs> uh, you know, diva. And well, I don't see why a Filipino or several Filipinos cannot become, maybe not necessarily like them or as big as them, but why can't we? Why can't we? Uh, in the case of this Philpop Festival and the OPM organization now headed by Augie Alcacid, when he approached me about a year ago about helping him out digitally, I said, no problem, because I think his issue is really uh, copyright and this uh, talk the, the the Green Hills syndrome. So we have to protect as well, no? Uh, this uh, these artists in terms of their own proprietary content. So we don't, we will help. We will help everybody. There is no you know uh, technology should be agnostic, and uh, there's no don't don't think that because we are a telco that we we alone can do it. I think you guys can do it. Thank you very much. The last few questions, perhaps. Um, maybe we can start back there, and then we go back down. Thank you very much, sir. Hi, Hi Mr. NDP. Uh, I'm Vincent Kesang from Buluka.com, a, a social e-commerce platform, a Filipino-owned startup. Okay. Uh, you have mentioned that Smart have millions of user base, and you want them to, uh, if, if I want to eat a spicy food and something with, will pop up, a uh, restaurant will pop up, recommend. Uh, Buluka.com is offering that. Will open by... No, wait, wait. This is my not, my, not my original question. But we'll be launching... <laughs> but we'll be launching next week. Better version. Okay. <laughs> okay, my original question. With Build It Is Smart Miracle TV5, we saw that you have been building a business ecosystem around. In terms of digital, we also have a digital ecosystem. Do you think you have a plan in conquering the whole digital ecosystem? If that is yes, what do you think that business component or entity is in helping your business ecosystem? Secret. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, we don't have one. <laughs> we, we, we don't have one. I don't, think, I don't think you can confine the creative juices in one in one particular company or group. I think it's got to be across the board. I think idea space is a good idea when these guys, Earl and Martin Quano, Meralco raise it because it's something the country needs and it's something that that is not all too confining in one group. I mean, it's open to everybody. So we're encouraging each company, especially, you know, it starts with the CEO. Uh, and it's got to be uh, educated, if you may, persuaded, cajoled into looking at IT in his business. No, so there's no there's no single group. I mean, uh, there's a what there's a what we call. I mean, the, the various disciplines within our group have created this so-called council so that they can talk to each other. There's a there's an HR council. There's a corporate social responsibility council. There's a technology council and so forth. So they do meet. That's where discussions are free flowing and. You know, with respect to, to these specific disciplines they're, they're in. No? And uh, we're encouraging that uh, so that there's, there's, there's more talk about technology in this group. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I think the days of industrialization are gone past us. The days when economies got, um, how do you call it, uh, propelled 
by exports like Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore are over for us. So where, where do we go? Are we going to be a nation of labor exporters? A nation of entertainers? Will that define us as a people? That's going to be, I mean, nothing wrong with those, but we, we should be more than that, diba? I think you guys have brains. So use them. Okay, maybe one more question. Yes, please, ma'am. Hi, good morning. I'm Pam Morales from SAS Philippines. Uh, and I'm, uh, I think I'm a customer to 80%, if not 100% of your business. And you mentioned that a while ago that user analytics is now a game changer. So my question is, um, what is the extent of your effort in consolidating a single view of your customer? Like, is, is there an, um, an initiative within your group to be able to understand me as a consumer of Meralco, of Smart, and use that as a powerful tool to better serve your customers? Um, well, thank you for using our services. In some respects, you have no choice, do Meralco. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, the advantage of monopoly is you don't have to be very bright. <laughs> um, uh, we, 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 uh, user analytics for the group is something that we have to be extremely cautious about. I mean, we've talked about it internally. Can there be a single bill? Diba? Uh, your water, your telephone, your 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 power, etc. I mean, there are many uh, obstacles, many impediments, and many things we have to ponder because uh, una una each of those companies seri seri and they're required by law to have their own bill. So if you put it under one bill, you know, uh, the law we may be in violation of the law. Saka kasama dun, when you when you think about it, uh, will we be allowed to to pass on information from one company to the other without the permission of the consumer, di ba? Magkakaroon yan ng human rights, mga ganyan-ganyan. The NGOs will be on our back, et cetera, et cetera. Because even here, I don't think we have, we failed to adopt the national ID system, di ba? Uh, in Hong Kong, nandun na yun. You have your card, it's mandated. Every Hong Kong uh, resident must have a card, as I do. Uh, and I tell you, it's so much easier to get in and out of the airport. No? So what more if we gather all of your information in one huge data bank, analyze them and so forth, so, and, and apply them t for the business. So I think we have to look at that very, very carefully. So it is a concept that is nice to look at, but I think it will have to start from each company. Meralco has a huge data bank that it has never exploited uh, for, you know, to, to be able to deliver better service. And so has Manila and even uh, a Smart and a Sun. So we have some ways to go per company. As to per, per vertical, no? as to eventually those verticals will converge into one data bank. Maybe the situation will change. Maybe the digital world will actually force, force the laws to follow what the what you guys want, what the consumer actually wants. No? So for now, it, uh, it, it is uh, some years away, I think. But individually, I think companies can probably do that. Okay, no? maybe we have one final question from Theater 3, sir, if you're still okay. <laughs> one uh, more. Hi, good morning. Good morning, sir. This is Denise Manahan for Mega Mobile. Uh, I've been part of a local uh, independent music community for a long time now, and I would like to ask, uh, how do you suppose your business infrastructure can make the local, like local independent music, lucrative again? Because as you were, as you mentioned earlier, there's this whole Green Hills, um, you know, the piracy kind of thing. How do you suppose um, you can help that? Thank you. Well, it starts with um, with what we did with the. Um Philpa Festival, no? you have to generate the content uh, in a very significant way. And OPM is the content we'd like to generate, not obviously Western music, but you know, Philippine, Philippine music as it, 
that it started in the 70s and 80s. So the job of uh, the Filipino artists is to precisely generate the content. Then we'll help you disseminate it uh, as widely as we can uh, via the internet and other devices that are available to our group companies. You know, whether it's on traditional TV screen or wireless, uh, television, IPTV, tablets, uh, cell phones, and then our job is to encrypt it. To encrypt the, your music or your video. Uh, sure, I think there'll still be some leakages, especially in the beginning, but our job is that the more online people use for to watch or to listen, I think the better it is for them uh, than it is not for them. No? At the same time, I think we should be able to track because hindi sila nakakakuha ng royalty, di ba? Every time music is played. Oh, ngayon, I think you're able to, to track how many downloads or whatever uh, are done on your, on your music. And then you should be paid X amount uh, per download. Di ba? Ako, I watch um, basketball games on the net in Hong Kong. And then there's a, isn't there a subscriber count or a count at the bottom? total people who have registered, at least in Hong Kong, I don't know about here, total cumulative who have, who have um, opened that site and the number of users online at that particular second. So it changes every second. So you could track how many people have logged in, how many people have logged out, and how many people are exactly, you know, per second uh, watching that particular basketball game. Okay. Thank you very much. And maybe to close off, we can ask MVP, what's next for you? If there still is something for MVP to do, GMA? <laughs> Just, I, I think it's a question on a lot of people's minds, sir. You may or may not answer, but... Well, uh, yeah, because of, uh, when both of us are public companies, so it's very difficult for me to, to give an answer that might satisfy you, your curiosity. But... Uh, I was asked this yesterday in a smart forum, so I said, you know, uh, can't say much at this time. Uh, call me, maybe. <laughs> uh, but it's it's like uh, parang para kaming LQ, eh. Sometimes we're on, sometimes we're off, right? <laughs> Pero at the end, on pa rin. At the moment, we're on. Ah, on kayo. Okay. I think that's good enough, right? All right. A big, big round of applause for Mr. Manny Pamilina. Sir, thank you so much for joining us.